So let's pray and we'll, we'll get started. So Father God, we thank you for this time that we can come together and worship your holy name. I ask that you be with us as we as we draw into uh, praise and worship this morning, Lord. I ask that you be with Gary as he brings this word to us, Lord. And we thank you for this time that we can come together. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
just one more time, just tell them with that that you have. So,
our God. Our God is the land. The land that was slain. For the sins of the world. In flood breaks the chains. That you are the lion of Judah. And God, that you're roaring in power. And you're roaring, roaring in might. And God, as your word says that one day, at your name, the name that's above every name, the name that's higher than every king in the kingdom, the name that's higher than any other prince of power, your power. God, in your name, every knee will bow and every tongue will and so, God, this morning we bow to you in adoration, we bow to you and worship God. And our soul desires to seek you. We seek you alone.
Men, you have influence. Men, you have authority. You have ability over people. And use the sphere of influence that God has given you to minister to those people that God has given you to minister to. There's co-workers, young men that need somebody to come alongside of them and mentor them. There's people in your neighborhood, there's people in your community that needs people to come alongside of them and minister to them. So do not miss out on that moment and do not miss the opportunity to impart God's wisdom to them. And I want to say another thing. You know, this morning, um, I'm not going to preach a traditional Father's Day message. I typically don't on holidays. And the reason is because sometimes one segment kind of feels left out. And I don't want anybody to feel left out because God's word is for everybody. Amen. But I also want to speak to the dad this morning that might be in this room for just a moment. Or I want to speak to the dad this morning that might be watching by Facebook Live. Maybe you feel like you've blown it. Maybe you feel like, and I'm speaking not just to, to those in the room or those watching, but I'm speaking to myself this morning because there's times as a father I feel like I've blown it and I've messed up and I've missed the mark with my kids or with my wife or whatever it may be. But can, can I tell you just one thing that's profound? You can't do it over again. You can't go back in time. You can't uh, fire up the DeLorean. By the way, I don't think that DeLorean would show up in 2020 right now. Because Michael J. Fox just might get stuck here. <laughs> but this morning, you can't do it over again. But you can do it differently from here on out. And that's a word not just for the fathers this morning. That's a word for everybody that's listening to me. You might have blown it. You might have sinned. You might have said a thing. You might have thought a thing. Come on. But God is in the business yeah. of reclamation and restoration. Yeah. God is in the business. You say, well, pastor... Can, can I just tell you, you didn't get saved in 1962 to draw and just say, that's it. I didn't get saved in 1993 for real. <laughs> Notice that. See, because I grew up in the church. My dad was a, a, a leader. And so people just expected me to act right and to do right. And I knew, sister, how to play the game, sister Gloria. I knew how when everybody would stand up, I better stand up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Pastor would even call on me to pray. By the way, this isn't any of my notes. This is just, I'm just talking to you right now. But when I had a real encounter with the Lord, I got saved. But that doesn't mean that I'm not done. <coughs> Can we turn up the lights? I want to see, I want to see these beautiful people this morning. Thank you. Just because you and I got saved doesn't mean that we're done. I'm, I'm going to say it to this side. Just because we got saved doesn't mean that we're done. It doesn't mean that we're perfected. I'm going to say it this side now. Just because we got saved doesn't mean that we're done. Doesn't mean that we're finished. For God has said there's this thing called sanctification. There's this thing that the Apostle Paul talked about. He said, the things that I want to do, that I know that are right, I cannot do them. And the things that I don't want to do, the things that I know that aren't right, those are the things that I gravitate to because I live in this flesh. And so this morning you think that you've flown in this way. I'm here to tell you that God is waiting for that God is waiting for you with open arms, just like the story of Luke chapter number 15, the Gospel of St. Luke. One of my favorite parables. It's called the story of the prodigal son. And, 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 and can I just tell you what I believe in? And we don't read this in the text. And I know somebody's going to come up to me after church or somebody's going to email me and say, Pastor, the Bible says 
to, to not add to or take away the scriptures. Yes, I hear what you're saying. But also, there's something called your intelligence. There's something called your intelligence that you're supposed to read the text and you're supposed to, the fancy Bible school word when you study hermeneutics and homiletics is you're supposed to exegete the text. In other words, you're supposed to dig in and you're excavating the text. When I was over in Israel, they were digging and they were excavating land and, and they were looking for biblical uh, 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 archaeological, uh, archaeological evidence so they could justify that God is, did exactly what he said that he did. And you know what? Can I just tell you right now that science, people's afraid of science. And people are afraid of that. But can I tell you that God can use science and God can use the things of this world to prove him to be true. And he has. And here I want to tell you this morning. There's this thing called intelligence. And when you read the scripture, you read in Luke chapter number 15. Well, let's just go here because I think this is going to be the sermon this morning. <laughs> In Luke chapter number 15, Spirit just told me, put the sermon that you prepared away. So I'm going to put it away. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put it back there. You know why I just did that? Because if I put it close to me, I'm going to pick it back up again. Because it's familiar. In Luke chapter number 15. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter number 15, we have this parable, and I've spoke on it. The parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin. But, but go down to verse number 11. In Luke 15, he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that fall to me. So he divided them. So in, in, in Jewish history, what you have to understand is that, that the younger son would get a third and the older son would get two thirds. I just had, actually had this happen to me in my life because I got three daughters. And so the other, the other day, I had told my youngest daughter had me. I said, hey, if you do this certain chore, daddy will give you some money. So she did her thing, and then she came up to me and she said, daddy, where's my money? <laughs> and I said, I don't have any. She said, yes, you do. I guess she know. watch this. She knows who her source is. She knows who her source is. She knows the one that's going to stand around her. And she knows the one that's going to stand over her. And she knows the one that's going to cover her. Her daddy. And I'm here to tell you this morning that there's somebody that's standing over you. There's somebody that's standing around you. There's somebody that has an inheritance for you. And his name is Daddy Jesus. His name is Abba Father. And he is at the right hand of God the Father right now, interceding for you. And she came to me and said, Daddy, give me what's mine. And so I gave it to her. And she had her money. And in this story, the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me. So the older son, we know, he, he, he was obedient. He was doing his job. He was taking care of the ranch. He was taking care of the family. He was taking care of the cattle. He was doing everything that he was supposed to do. And then his bratty, snot-nosed, younger brother steps into the picture and says, Give me mine. And the Bible says that the father didn't reluctantly, didn't begrudgingly, but he gave it to the son. And the Bible says that his son goes off to a faraway country and he wastes everything on right in, in the King James it says riotous living in other words he was not living right he was not doing what he was supposed to do he was not living a sanctified 
daily, holy life pleasing to God. And remember what I said, if you've blown it, just, be, or just because you might have got saved 32 years ago, doesn't mean that you're done walking with Jesus and living this race. It's a race. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And we have to die. The Apostle Paul, I love the Apostle Paul when he uses this analogy. He says, I have to buff, buffet my body. See, some of y'all, y'all read that and say, it says he, he, has to, he has to buffet his body. And so that gives us the reason to, when we leave here, to go down the street and go to the Golden Corral. Ugh. Help me, Jesus. Some of y'all wait for China King to open. And I'll pray for you, bless God. But it doesn't say, the Apostle Paul didn't say, buffet your body. Because when we go to a buffet, we make ourselves feel good. We eat so much good that we end up making ourselves feel bad. <laughs> Amen? Anybody in the house? But the Apostle Paul, when he said, hey, I'm going to buffet your body, he said, I treat my body and I put it into subjection. In other words, I put it and I subject it to the laws and the commands of God. Are you with me? But this younger son, he didn't want to do that. He left father's house. And, 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 and here, here's, I'm going to get into the intelligent part and then I'm going to be done. But the Bible goes on to say that he found himself in want. And he found himself hungry. And, 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 and the Bible says he, he gets a job in verse 15 and he joins himself to a citizen of that country. The inference there is he wasn't in a familiar place. He wasn't in familiar surroundings. He was in another world and he was in another culture. And, he, and this man sent him to feed the pigs. I was going to say swine, but he's like, what's that? No, pigs. Oink, oink. And verse 16, he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. We read this verse. Preachers just read this verse. Biblical teachers read this verse. And they're like, oh, he, he just would have ate with a piggy. What you have to understand, there's a deep spiritual implication in that. This guy was a Jew. And guess what Jews didn't eat? Any unclean animal. In other words, he was so messed up and he was so washed up, he was willing to to violate his religious beliefs. And some of us, God has told us to do certain things and to live a certain way. And because of sin, we are willing to violate what God has called us to do. We have been willing in the church to violate what God has called us to do in the church out of the need of staying in the comfort zone or out of the need of being popular. And watch this, out of the need of trying to grow the church, we have compromised what God has called us to say. And the son, but he has a great awakening. And I believe it's time for those in the house of God, I believe it's time for us as Christians to have this great awakening. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And I will die with hunger. And I go and rise to my father. And I'll say, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And I've sinned before you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Can I just tell you that confession is not just between you and God. When we sin, we confess to God. And then we got to go to those that we've hurt. Our kids our families, whatever it may be, husband, wife, and we got to say, hey, I'm sorry, because I blew it. And then the Bible says, he goes in verse 20, and I'm winding down. I'm heading, I'm heading around the third right now, and I'm heading home. And he arose, and he came to his father, but when he was a great way off, What's the Bible say? What's the words of Jesus? If you have a Bible that has got red letters, this is what Jesus says. His father saw him and had compassion on him. And he ran and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. 
him. Here's, here's the wisdom in this text. The Father. I believe every day that the Father was sitting on the front porch. I believe he had his binoculars out and he was looking down the long corridor, the long gravel dirt road. I believe occasionally he got up and he would pace back and forth because there was some movement down there and he heard some noise and he's like, is that my son? And it wasn't a son, it was just some cow that got loose. And the father didn't even care because he's waiting for his son to come home. Can I just tell you something this morning? I, I'm going to be speaking directly to the dads this morning. That's fine. I can speak directly to the, I, I'll speak to whoever wants to listen to this preacher. I believe this morning that Jesus is sitting on the porch. And he's waiting for you and me to come home. And you say, well, pastor, I got saved at church camp. Well, there's some, still some things in your life that you need to come home to. You say, I got saved in the church and I got married in the church. And it could have been this one. But, but, but this morning, this preacher said, there's some things in your life that you still need to come home. And the rest of the story goes, the father didn't allow him to get his pre rehearsed speech out. But all the father said is come home. And you say, well, well, I cannot read that in the text. Well, again, this is where you've got to use wisdom. And this is where you've got to use your spiritual education. Notice I didn't say Christian education. I said spiritual like, uh, education. Why do I say he said come home? Because he called the servant. He said, put a robe on his body. Boy, because your clothes stink. I believe the King James would say, your clothes stink it. I mean, I was like, what is he talking about? He didn't know I was a literary English major. And then he said, put a ring on his finger. And then he said, now go kill, go get a fat calf. Don't get some skinny thing. Go kill the fatted calf. In other words, the one that we have been, been preparing for a feast. In other words, we've been feeding this sucker. We've been stuffing it, man. We've been doing all this stuff because we have anticipated a party. And guess what? The party is today because my son that was lost is now found. And he put his arm around him and he said, come home, son. Yeah. This morning, I want you to listen to me. Jesus is saying, come on, come on. And I wander far away from God. Now I'm coming home. Anybody know that? I'm coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. And open wide thine arms of love. And Lord, I'm coming. I miss singing with my father. 
I miss preaching and having my father in the sound booth. I miss these moments. But I know because my father was right with God and because I know that I'm striving every day to be right with God, even moments that I miss the mark, that I'm going to see my earthly father again someday. But this morning, I want to tell you that you have the ultimate father. And he's in heaven right now. He believes in you. He loves you. He cares for you. You know how much he cares for you? The Bible says that he sent his son to die on the cruel rugged cross for your sin and for my sin. And this morning, you need to come home. Stop playing church. Those of you watching by television, tablet, phone, we need to stop playing church. Stop using God to just bless you. Stop praying to God, just to God, would you just bless me? And we need to start praying to God, God, would you fill me? And God, would you help me follow you? Whether you're here in this room, whether you're watching me by television right now this morning, I just want to, I want to pray for you. Maybe this morning you say, Pastor, I've blown it. It's time to come home. Maybe you say, Pastor, I haven't lived like I, 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 I just lived selfishly like that, like that younger son. Whether you're in this room, I'm going to count to three, and I just want you to lift your hand if I can pray for you. Nobody's looking around. Nobody's got their eyes open. But me. And maybe we're, wherever you're at right now, make, make whatever room you're in right now this morning, friend, that are watching me, would you just make it an altar? That couch that you're sitting on, would you make it an altar? That love seat that you're sitting on, would you make it an altar? That, that bar stool that you're sitting on, would you make it an altar this morning? Father, right now, one, two, three, lift up your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Amen. Praise God. I see that hand. Praise God. I see that hand. Praise God. Anyone else? I see that hand. Praise God. Anyone else? Those of you that are watching me, just raise your hand in your heart. I'm going to pray for you. I see that hand. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. Thank you so much, God, this morning. For this time that we've been able to come into this place. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that every hand that lifted. Help them to come home to Father's house. Help them to know that they're already there in Father's house. Whether in this room, God, or whether those that are watching by television. I just pray in the name of Jesus. That you receive each one. That lifted up a physical hand or maybe just in their heart said, God, I need you. God, I need to come home. Would you let them know that they might have been lost? But God, right now in this moment, you found them. And God, I emphasize that you found us because God, we don't even know where to look. But God, you found us when we were in the pig pen. And you received us. Father, would you encourage each one in this place? Would you bless each one in this place? Would you encourage those watching? Would you bless those watching? And Father God, we will never fail to give you the praise. We will never fail to give you honor. We will never fail to give you glory. And we ask this in the name of Jesus and all God's people say. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We love you. Pastor's Bible studies at 7 this week. Uh, youth meeting is, uh, Pastor's Bible study is going to be online again. But youth group, again, it's at 6 o'clock. It's going to be in this room. So we would love to see you. Have an awesome, awesome day. Fathers especially. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. We love you.